Welcome back to the Bible Podcast. My name's Dale Miller, and on the Bible Podcast, we elevate the Word of God to the throne of our heart, its rightful place, and I declare Jesus Christ my first love. And I compel you to make that decision today. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and the notification bell to get more and all of my Bible Podcast content. You know on the Bible Podcast, we are notoriously known and we are relentless about proclaiming to the masses the Apostles' Doctrine. On the Bible Podcast, we want you to be equipped with focus, discipline, and commitment to the Holy Bible and the Holy Scriptures. On the Bible Podcast, we inform you that half-truth is still a lie. Good intentions will not save you. And you can be sincerely wrong, and it still doesn't make it right. Would you allow your child to go to a school and allow them to teach your child that one plus one equals five? Of course not. <laughs> Would you allow your children to go to a school that tells them that they are not who they are? Of course not. All right. You know, on the Bible podcast, we oppose the hordes of hell of doctrines of devils and seducing spirits, and they are running rampant in America. The doctrines of devils and seducing spirits and the perversion that is being promoted at government levels, at your state levels, and in your local school district board. Pouring out inappropriate literature, inappropriate photos, inappropriate inter in information that is tearing down the fabric of the next generation, of the very basic discernment of who they are. So remember, if you do not allow the Holy Scriptures to guide your mind, guide your senses, and guide your feelings and emotions, and you, you just sort of say, no, not, that's not for me, then you open the door for the God of this world, the Prince of Darkness, to come in and influence and put on you spirits of confusion, spirits of depression, darkness, misery, and you become something that you're not. On today's Bible podcast, we're going to look at the Apostle Peter. He did proclaim the right words to tell the nations of Israel, 23 of them under heaven, who had come to Pentecost. He proclaimed exactly how they should be baptized. All right, that's what we're going to get into today. Many Christians today who I ask have you obeyed the Apostles' Doctrine, have no clue of what, what the Apostles' Doctrine is. And that's the perfect plan of Satan, to create, you know, 40 to 60 churches in your little town, in your little city, okay, with all the welcome signs, but yet nobody knows what the Apostles' Doctrine is. When, in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says they continued steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine. So you may be saying, well, yeah, I, I really don't know what the Apostles' Doctrine is. What is it, Dale? Well, let me, let me shout it from the rooftops. Let me shout it from the mountaintops. Peter said on the first day of church to the nations of Israel who asked, who demanded, what must we do to enter into heaven? Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This promise is unto you and your little ones, children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Is God calling you today? Do you feel conviction when you've sinned or you're living a life underneath the yoke of sin? Well, guess what? That's why Jesus went to the cross to abolish the wall of sin. But you must come into the framework of God. You must come through the door of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said in John chapter 10, he was the door. And if you wanted to come into heaven, you had to go through the door 
If you tried to come in some other way, Jesus considers you a robber and a thief, and no robber and thief is going to go to heaven. Robbers and thieves wear disguises. Do you feel like you're not yourself? Do you feel like, wow, I'm doing things I really shouldn't be doing? Well, you're living that thief and robber lifestyle because when it comes time to rob for your selfish, grandiose, narcissistic self, you're putting on a disguise. You're entering in places and stealing and robbing, okay? And no one is going to come through the door of the kingdom of heaven as a, a, with a lifestyle of robbing and thieving. And robbers and thievers are takers, manipulators. They wear disguises. They, they say one thing and do another. So we want to make it very clear on the Bible podcast that we bring you to the door of the kingdom of heaven. And we stand with Peter. We stand with Philip. We stand with Ananias. We stand with the Apostle Paul. We stand with Jude and James. How about that? And we want you to come up on the rock. That's right. Jesus said, he that, he that hears my words and obeys them, I'll liken to him as a wise man who built his house on a rock. And when the storms come, believe you me, the storms are coming to test your lifestyle. Do you want more darkness? Do you want more conviction and condemnation? Well, guess what? Stay where you're at in the sinking sand and God will provide you with judgment. That's right. But he does this so that you will want to change your lifestyle. All right. The Bible says wrongdoers, people who do it wrong, will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And on the Bible podcast, we want you to do it right. We want you to start right. And so did Peter. And so did Jesus. He picked Peter in Matthew 16 because Peter had a revelation. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And to thee, Peter, I give the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth will be loose in heaven, bound in heaven will be bound on earth. Praise God. Peter was put in charge in front of the other 11 disciples. That included Matthew. All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Again, thank you for tuning into the Bible podcast. And we're so excited because Peter had it right. And you may be sitting in one of the harlot churches that was created at 325 AD through the Roman government. And then all the prostitute churches, the Reformation churches of Europe, the Reformation churches here in America that will not baptize you, that will not tell you to be filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. How about that? Satan is flourishing in this realm using the simple minded, the perverted minded and the ungodly directions of counterfeit imposters to guide you into the baptism of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, which is not biblically practiced in your Bible. Okay, that's a fact. That's a reality. And beware of the explain it away minister who will use scripture to explain away to you that you don't need to be filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's a fact. That's a reality. Beware on the Bible podcast, we warn you of the perils of counterfeit and imposters, liars, manipulators, narcissism, and doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. It's real, and you need to hear it in Jesus' name. You need to hear it. You need to tune in. There isn't nothing worse than hearing someone say, I'm going to church. Now, that's wonderful. They're going to go to church and they roll up into a parking lot where false doctrine is promoted, where false doctrine, and they do not proclaim the apostles' doctrine. It is a travesty. Why? Because the delusion and illusion that the individual and his family have when they roll up in the parking lot is we're doing the will of God. We're okay when really they are stuck in the mud. Okay, listen, if your pastor, your minister does not preach and proclaim the apostles' doctrine, it's time to say goodbye. That's right. Satan has created trap churches, okay, which preach 
not the apostles' doctrine. They preach the Reformation doctrine. They preach the imagination of the carnal mind, okay? And you have orators. Yes, you can have great speakers who pick up the Bible and say, man, I can make a lot of money, and I can have people crying alligator tears and having people dancing and worshiping, and, but I don't want to preach that apostles' doctrine. No, 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 because that don't, that don't pay the bills, okay? Well, I want to preach a, a gospel that will fill my cattle barns three times every Sunday with hundreds of people. I want campuses all over the Gulf Coast so that, so that I can fill my own grandiosity. Yes, that's right. That will not get you into heaven. Why? Because heaven sees everything much differently than the carnal mind sees things. Okay? First, the carnal mind is an enemy against God. Do you realize that? Jesus said, you must be born again of water and spirit. Paul wrote and said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. It's required. And Jesus said, My sheep know my voice, and another they will not follow. So who are you going to trust? Some educated, certified, narcissistic, grandiose, false doctrine imposter? Or are you going to grab your Bible and study to show yourself approved unto God? A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Are you going to do it, or are you just going to sit in that pew uh, and be a zombie for hell? I'm telling you, you better get it right. You only get one shot to go through the door of the kingdom of heaven. And if you think I'm just making this up, why don't you go to Re Revelations chapter 4 and look at the Apostle John after writing the churches. The Bible says a door was opened in heaven and he went through the door. Immediately he was in the Spirit and he went through the door and into the presence of the throne of room of heaven and God. Now that's the door. The, the the Bible podcast is getting you ready for by obeying the apostles' doctrine. Come on, come on. We don't want you wasting time listening to babblers who will who will speak evil of the apostles' doctrine. That's right. I've sat in Bible studies and listened to these uh, babblers tell their people that. Uh, Baptism in Jesus' name is of the devil. Speaking in tongues is done away with. Nobody needs to speak in tongues. It's the truth. I've sat and listened to the atrocities of perverted doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. Yes, they'll condemn the apostles. They'll condemn baptism in Jesus Christ. They will condemn speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. That's right. They condemn it, but they embrace a lapse lifestyle that includes addiction, sinning occasionally when it feels good, doing this or doing that. It doesn't matter. And they adopt this mindset. You'll always be a sinner. Sounds like a congregation of demons. That's right. All right. It's reality. And you better sharpen your listening skills and sharpen your eyeball skills, okay? And grab a hold of your Bible and obey the Apostles' Doctrine. You know, Satan doesn't care how much faith you have. He doesn't care you can move a mountain. Yeah, okay? He doesn't care that you believe in a loving God that, you know, cuddles you and rock, rock a bye baby you to sleep. He doesn't care now you lay me down to sleep, Lord. He doesn't care about that. What Satan cares about is if you take your faith and belief and you obey the apostles' doctrine, which is the oracles of heaven given to Jesus during the 40 days to his apostle Peter, and he proclaimed how to enter in at the door to the 23 nations. There was only 3,120 people baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins on the first day of church. That alone is overwhelming evidence on how you should be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must 
be saved. Acts 4 and 12. No, you can't even have salvation without the name of Jesus Christ being pronounced over you in your baptism. Paul wrote the Galatians in chapter 3 and he said when you're buried with when you're baptized into Christ you've put on Christ it's the robe praise God be warned the Bible podcast is warning you to get it right there are many professions out there that have imposter uh, professions that run around and say they can do the job right and really they create more of a mess and you know and you pay three times more to get it done right that's right so it I, it behooves you and I to study to show ourselves approved unto God rightly dividing the scriptures and if they can be rightly divided they can be wrongly divided. And this is why you have a plethora of 4,200 persuasions dancing and entertaining with smoke screens, laser beams, TV screens, and false doctrines and doctrines of devils flourishing in this realm. And on the Bible podcast, we're, we're beseeching you. We are inviting you to obey the apostles' doctrine. Now, that was the first day of church, Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, and to kick it off, the 120 believers that obeyed from the Mount of Olives were first filled with the Holy Ghost. Woo! Filled with the Holy Ghost. How did they know they got the Holy Ghost? Chill bumps? No. Alligator tears? No. Uh, Peter ran around and slapped everybody on the head and said, you got the Holy Ghost? No. The Bible says they were sitting. <laughs> they were sitting much like students do in school sit and listen and watch okay and learn well the apostles were obedient from the mount of olives going to take your obedience they went into jerusalem for 10 days tarried praising and worshiping god and a wind came in as it's described in acts chapter 2 and they were all filled with the holy ghost and be here it is and again i know you don't want to hear this but here it comes, and, oh, and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Oh boy, oh boy. Now, why is that so odd? Why is it when people hear speaking in tongues and, oh, that's, that's, uh, that's odd to me, oh, but I'm stepping back. Okay, why? Why? Don't you want God in your life? Don't you want the Lord to come into your heart? That's what they were desiring. We want Jesus. We never want to lose him. Maybe you've lost Jesus. Maybe you've lost your focus, discipline, and commitment. Okay, maybe you haven't spoken tongues in years. Well, now you need to. You need to come back to that Pentecostal experience. Praise God. So they had these feelings and emotions, but they had obedience. Okay, and when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That is a fact. That is reality. And they knew they had received that gift that Jesus promised 10 days prior because they were speaking in tongues. So how are you going to know? What's the overwhelming evidence that you're going to have when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? It's not chill bumps. Don't believe that manipulating narcissistic pastor, that 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 uh, uh, pinball wizard evangelist. They don't know what they're talking about. They just want you to look at them. They want you to absorb their grandiosis. That's all. They explain away uh, baptism in Jesus' name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they want you looking at them. Okay? Beware. Beware. Let's keep our eyes on the apostles. Let's obey the apostles' doctrine. Let's watch their actions. Okay? All right, so we're, we're pouring this out using the example of Pentecost to wake you up, to show you that this had never happened on planet Earth ever before. And on the initial moment of Pentecost, where the promise was being fulfilled, the authentic, genuine experience of being filled with the Holy Ghost took place. And it, it doesn't describe it as chill bumps. It doesn't describe it as getting smacked on the head by uh, Peter or, uh, you know, uh, alligator tears and, 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 and all an emotional wreck. No. They spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. All of them got it. Now, there were mockers. 
There were people laughing. There were people like, these people are drunk. Okay, you need the Holy Ghost because that's the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord, is it your strength? Come on, the Holy Ghost is your comforter. He'll lead and guide you into all the truth so you quit lying to yourself, okay? He's going to show you things to come. That's right. You want to see into the future? Get filled with the Holy Ghost, God's Spirit. Do you want to see the things uh, and you'll testify of Jesus? You need the Holy Ghost. Come on. Jesus said if you're ashamed of Him, He will be ashamed of you. Come on. Come on. Rise up. Rise up and let's grab that obedience. Let's take your faith and belief and let's go to Pentecost and let's get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and let's get you filled with the Holy Ghost. You'll know because you'll speak in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. It's, it's right there for you. It's so simple. It's so simple. But people back away. But isn't it odd and ironic that if you take someone with the same you know, genre of I want to be a part of, they can go to a rock concert and, and do a line of dust, smoke some weed, and they don't care where they end up. Yeah, it's the truth. See, that's the difference between desiring the Spirit of God and desiring the flesh of yourself. Now, that's the truth. Okay, you're either going to be spirit led or fleshly dead. Okay, now come on, which one is it going to be? Which one are you going to feed? Which one are you going to focus on? Okay, you're going to focus on your flesh? Then guess what? You can be guaranteed to die. That's right, death is tied to your flesh. But if you, through the spirit, mortify the deeds of the flesh, you're going to live. Praise God. And you're going to live in Christ. Praise God. All right. Okay. So, so this moment in the Bible, Acts chapter 1 and 2, is so significant to the bridge of Jesus' three and a half year ministry and how Jesus had preached and obeyed himself to be baptized, okay, and to be filled with God's Spirit and to be tested and tried. And he lived above sin. Come on. Then he entered his ministry, and he built people's faith and belief up in him. But then when they watched him get crucified, they all forsook him. Okay? And when he came out of the grave, there was nobody believing in Jesus. He had to go and restore their faith and belief. And then he gave them a final commandment in Acts chapter 1, to be obedient and tarry in Jerusalem until they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Have you received the Holy Ghost today? God is no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of persons. Acts chapter 2, 3,120 people obeyed the apostles' doctrine and were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and filled with the Holy Ghost. And in Acts chapter 2, it says very plainly, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. We want you to understand that like a major highway rolling right into Florida. That's right. It, it's a major highway. There, there's no, there's no, you know, exits. If you want to be saved, you got to come in the apostles' way. 23 nations obeyed. On that first day, 3,120 people were all baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and then were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues. Strangers from Rome were there, and they took it back to Rome after Pentecost and started a church. All these 3,100 people went back to their hometowns and started churches baptizing in Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and filling people with the Holy Ghost. That's a fact. That's reality. Now, was Peter right or was he wrong? Because we show you that Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And keys are used to open door. That's right. And he opened the door on the day of Pentecost. Peter did. And guess who stood with him? Matthew. That says it very clearly in Acts chapter 2. Peter stood up with the other eleven and proclaimed to the Jewish nation what they must do to be saved. The Old Testament was done away with. The veil in the temple was rent top to bottom. Overwhelming evidence. The Old Testament was done away and now the New Testament was going to be enforced. Now, if you go to any local church here in town or your local town or your city, 
or your TV mega satellite prostitute ministries who love lining their bank accounts with your cash and you could take that to the bank. Okay, if you listen, okay, they will tell you to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Why? Why is it different than what Peter practice the one the man who had the keys to the kingdom huh why why okay we're going to get this in the right context with overwhelming evidence many people under this delusion of doctrines of devils and seducing spirits being baptized in titles which does not remit your sin that is a fact that is the rule and that is required Peter did not get up and give suggestions. Peter did not get up and say it doesn't matter. A baptism is an outward sign of an inward commitment. Wrong. Peter said, baptize in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Now, Satan heard that, and Satan has created counterfeit baptism. And he's using the Bible out of context, using Matthew 28, 19. Now, why would Matthew 28, 19 contradict, or does it? Okay, first off, you must understand that the book of Matthew was not written until 50 to almost 60 A.D. So Matthew wasn't worried about baptism. No, he was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, when Peter told the Jews how to be baptized, Matthew got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Okay, now, now, by the time Matthew writes his gospel, guess what? The Samaritan nation, the Gentile nation, the apostle Saul who becomes Paul, he's baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And John's 12 believers all baptized in the name of Jesus. The Samaritans, the Jews, the Gentiles, Saul, who became Paul, and John's 12 believers in the 19th chapter of Acts and in Acts chapter 22, all these souls, nations, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And then in 50 to 60 AD, Matthew pens his gospel and he records Jesus' words. Everybody calls it the Great Commission, but Luke had a Great Commission as well. The Gospel of Luke has a Great Commission as well. How about that? Why, why don't we ever hear of that? Okay, so see, Satan is very subtle about deceiving you with the baptism that Matthew writes. And, and chronologically, Matthew should not, is not, as a matter of fact, Chronologically, the book of Matthew is not the first book of the New Testament. Chronologically, it's not. Okay? <laughs> the book of James is your first book of the New Testament. But see, when they put all the books in here, they wanted to say, okay, let's, let's make sure the Gospels are up front. Okay, but that doesn't mean that it's wrong. Everybody wants to learn about Jesus and his life. And Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John describe his biological uh, biography and his ministry for three and a half years. There's nothing wrong with that, but you have to understand it chronologically. So, in other words, when Matthew wrote his gospel in 50 to 60 AD, okay, in that time span, then then he, he permitted Peter to get it all wrong because he did say, wait a minute, Peter, you're doing it wrong. You see, the, you see the simplicity and the simpleness? Matthew did not argue with Peter on the day of Pentecost. That's a fact. That's a reality. P Matthew got baptized by Peter in the name of Jesus Christ. So then all the nations were saved under and baptized in Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And this would validate Paul's writings to the Galatians in chapter 1, verse 8. He said this, though we or an angel preach any other gospel, then what we preach, let him be accursed. 
What is the gospel? It is the salvation message that was purchased. Okay, you have the ministry, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, but now let's go through the door of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus didn't say it stopped because he died on the cross. No, he said you got to come through the door, and he was the door. See, you got to go through the door of the kingdom of heaven. The apostle John on the Isle of Patmos in the fourth chapter of Revelation went through a door. He went through a door. Folks, you can't make it up. Okay, and he was qualified to go through that door. Why? Because in Acts chapter 2, he was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and he received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, spoke in tongues as the Spirit, gave utterance. That's a fact. That's reality. Okay, so we're pointing out a very critical uh, doctrines of devil and seducing spirit, twisting and manipulation of Scripture, where thousands, hundreds of thousands of churches 4,200 of them will baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And remember, there's no remission of sins in titles. So you have the illusion that you're saved. Hey, I'm going to heaven. But right before you try to go to the door, a chain is going to pull you back. The chain of sin. Because it was never remitted. Then you tell me. You tell me. When Jesus says in Matthew 7 and Matthew 22 chapters 7 and 22 he's talking to a group of people who pledged their allegiance to him lord didn't we use your name to cast out devils many wonderful miracles and 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 uh, and, uh, and uh, many wonderful works and miracles and cast out devils and he said away from me you worker of iniquity what is iniquity sin he said i never knew you see you can think you're saved and you're going to split hell wide open on the Bible podcast, we want you to have 2020 vision of the apostles' doctrine. Obey it to be saved. Now, there was another man who entered the wedding feast and he didn't have a garment. The garment is putting on Christ. Paul wrote to the Galatians in chapter 3 and said, When you're baptized in Christ, you put on Christ. He is your new robe. Come on. That man that went into that wedding garment wedding feast without the wedding garment was called friend and then he was told how did you get in here and the man stood speechless you'll be speechless and then the master of the feast said bind this man and cast him into hell now that's a fact that's reality folks narrow is the way to eternal life few there be that find it many broad is the way to destruction and many go down therein and on the Bible podcast, we want to give you the overwhelming evidence, the truth, the facts, uh, uh, that they only practice baptism in Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Okay? Yeah, you better know. You better get it right. Okay? So, Matthew was baptized by Peter in the name of Jesus Christ. And then, 30 years 35 years later, Matthew writes his gospel, and he puts in Matthew 28, 19, Jesus said, Go ye therefore in all the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now let's slow down for a minute. Your English teacher in the third grade would teach you that Father is not a name. Son is not a name, and Holy Ghost is not a name. Those are titles. Those are offices that Jesus held. That's right. Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. Jesus told Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's a fact. That's reality. They picked up rocks to kill Jesus. He said, why do you do this? They said, because you being a man claim to be God, because only God can forgive sin. Jesus never apologized. Come on. Come on, you need to understand the dual nature of Jesus. He was a man who submitted to the Spirit of God, and he was God in flesh, reconciling the world unto himself. That is a fact. That is reality. There is no such thing as Trinity. The word Trinity is not in your Bible, and the word Trinity was invented by the Catholic Roman Catholics. And so all these delusional reformations in Europe and in America have still adopted the Catholic persuasion of doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. It's a fact. It's a reality. And then Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 1 verse 8, if we or an angel preach any other doctrine, any other gospel, let him be accursed. There's no room for two baptisms. Ephesians chapter 4, Paul wrote to the Ephesians and said there's only one faith 
one baptism in one God. That's a fact. That's a reality. And on the Bible podcast today, we're discerning. Peter didn't get it wrong, and Matthew obeyed Peter, and when Matthew wrote his gospel in 50 to 60 AD, he didn't contradict the name, and the, the, the spelling of the name in that 2819 is name, singular. So grammarly, singular, means who is the name of the Father? <laughs> who is the name of the Son? Who is the name of the Holy Ghost? Jesus Christ. Colossians says that in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. That is a fact. That is reality. And Satan doesn't want you being complete. He wants you being incomplete. He wants your sin still tagged on you because right before you enter, try to go through the door, that chain is going to pull you back because your sins were never remitted in Jesus' name. So Peter did not have it wrong. And we want to shout out to these delusional, counterfeit, imposter ministers. You will be held accountable for sending people straight to hell because you held the truth in a lie. And you buried people in a uh, no form of remission of sins. There's no remission of sins in titles. Peter did not give a suggestion. Peter gave the rule and the requirement of the oracles of heaven delivered him by Jesus in Matthew 16 and in the 40 days that he said Jesus expounded on the things pertaining to the kingdom of heaven in Acts chapter 1. And Peter stood and the apostles stood up with him in agreement and he told the nations on how to be saved. Philip went to the Samaritans baptizing them in the name of Jesus Christ. Peter was called to the Gentiles and he commanded them to be baptized in Jesus Christ when they were filled with the Holy Ghost for they heard him speak in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. The apostle saw on the ground, obeyed Jesus' words when he said, get up, and it'll be told you what you must do. Saul, who became Paul, was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6 declares that. 1 Corinthians, he, was, he spoke in tongues more than anyone. You are not going to dodge this with the carnal doctrines of devils and seducing spirit mindset. You will be held accountable for the lie, the truth you held and presented a lie to the people. Now, now you know, sheeple can be easily manipulated and guided until they start reading and studying. <laughs> That's right, and maturing in the Word of God. And that's what we compel you to do. Prove us wrong here on the Bible Podcast. Show us one person baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You can't. You can't. So what are you doing lying to yourself? What are you doing lying to your congregation? What are you doing burying them in a counterfeit baptism that does not remit sin? Shame on you. It's just the truth. It's just reality. Okay, now... I meet people who tell me I'm going to obey the words in red over Peter. I'm going to obey the words in red over everybody. Well, then then you're you're actively accusing Peter of having it wrong because he did baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost when he buried 3,120 people including Matthew in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That's a fact. That's a reality. And you better beware of your ignorance. It'll drag you straight to hell. You can have a zeal for God. You can worship, dance around, throw out your tracks out in public. Yeah, you got a zeal, but you don't have knowledge. So what you did, uh, you don't have knowledge of the truth, okay, or discerning what is the rule and what is required to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So what did you do? Why, you went and started your own righteousness. That's right. That's what the Catholics did. That's what your Reformation in Europe did. That's what your Reformation in America did. They established their own righteousness. And Paul declares this in Romans chapter 10 about the Israelites who did the same thing you're doing. And you went about establishing your own righteousness, not the righteousness of God, because you won't submit to the apostles' doctrine. You refuse to be obedient, okay? And you are not entering the kingdom of heaven. You're entering in a trap door, a trap church, which is destined for the pits of hell. That's a fact. That's reality. Come on. 
So you got people out there, oh, I'm going to obey the words in red. Well, let me, let me remind you that it, it wasn't until June 19th of 1899 that a ma Christian magazine write, editor, uh, Lois Klopich, wanted the words of Jesus in red. Okay? So, you know, you need to value uh, how it was applied, not that it was printed in red. Because Peter obeyed the oracles of heaven, and you have not. You're going to be ignorant, you're going to be stubborn, which is a combination of ignorance and witchcraft, and you're going to burn in a devil's hell. Because your sin has not yet been remitted. And you're going to teach your children how to go straight to hell, being baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Okay, no one in the Bible was baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, not even Matthew. Okay, and chronologically, Matthew did not write his gospel till 50, 60 AD, but yet in real time, Peter was burying Matthew and 3,119 people in Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. How can you ignore that? You're ignorant and you're going to burn in a devil's hell. Snap out of it. Snap out of it. Satan ain't playing games. He has created counterfeit churches, counterfeit doctrines, imposters, liars, manipulators in this realm to keep you from going to heaven. Study to show yourself approved to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Who was Peter? You're devaluing Peter. Matthew never devalued Peter. Oh no, but you are. You're ignoring what Matthew obeyed when Peter said, here's the oracles and what's, what's the rule and what's required. You don't get to change it up. You don't have the right. You No scripture is a private interpretation. Okay? All right. So let's, let's get that out in the open. That the reason we have the letters of red, okay, in our Bible is because uh, Lois Klopich in 1899 said, man, it would be great to have the letters of Jesus in red. <laughs> That's all. That's all. There wasn't this secret formula that, oh, we better put all these words in red so they supersede anything else that Jesus taught his disciples to proclaim. No, no. Peter told you what the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost when he baptized you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That's a fact. That is reality. Okay, uh, so don't be lured away by the ignorance of the statement, I'm going to obey the letters in red over anyone, including the apostles and Peter, okay? And that undermines Matthew 16, when Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven, that's authority, access, and leadership. That undermines that. That's what Satan wants to put in your mind, okay? Okay, and what Jesus meant. Baptize in the name. <laughs> Singular, not titles, a name. But Jesus represents the character of our Father, the character of the Son, and the character of the Holy Ghost that's in me. Yes, praise God. Amen. And for you, come on. You know you need to cross over that bridge and be obedient to the Apostles' Doctrine. We want to applaud you. Yes, do it right. You only get one shot. Just like Eminem said, you only get one shot. One, you, you know, don't puke up spaghetti on your sweater that mom made. No, you got to get up there and do it right. Come on. Come on, Eminem. Get, get with it. Get it right, Eminem. Come on, you get one shot. Don't miss your chance to go to heaven. That's why John on the Isle of Patmos wrote to churches, and in the fourth chapter, a door was open, and he went through the door because he obeyed the Apostles' Doctrine. He was pre-qualified. Come on. You're not going to end up in hell and say, how did I end up here? You're not going to go to heaven and say, how did I get here? No, no, no. Ignorance is bliss to the carnal mind. But God will hold us all accountable to what we you we took our faith and belief in. What did we obey? Devils believe in one God and tremble. The devils have faith in the coming judgment. The devils had their prayers answered in the gospel. So what can you do that the devils, they can believe just like you do. They have faith just like you do. They pray just like you do. And God granted their prayer when he said, go into the swine. 
How about that? The only thing they can't do that you can do in this hour to save your soul out of a devil's hell is obey the apostles' doctrine. Come on, quit lying to yourself. You can't have one foot in sin and one foot in, uh, I think I'm going to go to heaven. I'll, I'll just do this with half my time. I'm going to have half my time in hell, half my time in heaven, and God will figure it out. No, 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 no. God will vomit you out of his mouth. You're lukewarm. He'd rather you be cold or hot. Come on. Which one are you? Which one are you? Identify who you are. But we're on the Bible podcast compelling you to obey. Take your faith and belief and obey the apostles' doctrine. Come on through the door. Obey what Peter said. Obey what the Samaritans obeyed. And the Jews and the Gentiles. John's 12 believers, the apostles all, who became Paul. Praise God in, in Acts 22. Come on. Okay, there's going to be no excuse. All right, so this is a fact. The Gospel of Matthew was not written till 50 or 60 A.D., much later after all the nations were baptized in Jesus Christ. And, and Matthew didn't write that to get anyone confused. Matthew's rolling around in heaven going, how in the world did they screw this up? Many people are going to burn in hell because their sin was not remitted. Okay, Paul's on his third missionary journey around 53 AD, and he found John's 12 believers, and they were disciples. He walked up to them and said, have you got the Holy Ghost that you believe? They responded, we don't know what you're talking about. The next words out of Paul's mouth was, how were you baptized? Why? Because it matters. He said, John told you to believe on him that should come after him. That's on Jesus Christ. When they heard this, they were not baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. Paul laid his hands on them. They received the gift of the Holy Ghost, began to speak in tongues, and spiritual gifts were there, and they prophesied. Come on. It's right there under your nose, and you're snubbing it away. You're walking in rebellion. You're walking in your sin. You're walking in ignorance and stubbornness, which is the sin of witchcraft. Come on. Come out. Come out of darkness. Come out of the shadows. Come into the light and come through the door. Praise God. These are facts. All right. Paul, who was Saul in the ninth chapter of Acts, was told by Jesus from heaven, to go to Damascus, and it would be told him what he must do. And then Ananias came to, to Saul, and, and, he, and he said, it's time to get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Do, how, who do you think you are? That you don't need to speak in tongues, you don't need baptized in Jesus Christ. You are actively... You are actively rejecting the rule and what is required to enter in at the door of the kingdom of heaven. Listen, folks, I didn't make the rules and boundaries. I had to obey. Praise God. And we're just the Bible podcast uh, uh, declaring and promoting the Apostles' Doctrine because Satan is stomping it out and Satan is promoting perversion, doctrines of devils and seducing spirits in your face and our face every single day. And people, sheeple, are running to the cattle churches and listening to buffoons, uh, listening to encounter uh, 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 false false ministers, imposters, liars, manipulators, narcissistic nonsense of Scripture. Remember, Satan was in the garden, and he used Scripture, and he went after Eve, and she was deceived by Scripture. Deceived by Scripture because the serpent manipulated it. Thou shalt not surely die. Then she gave to her husband, and they crumbled out of the presence of God. And God had to come and remove them out of the garden. And he put a flaming sword. It's the truth. <laughs> and then he had to judge them. And then he had to put them in a robe. Don't settle for your own excuses. Don't tell yourself you'll figure it out or you got tomorrow. This realm is a risk and you can't guarantee yourself tomorrow. As a matter of fact, your next breath and my next breath 
is not even guaranteed. It's the truth. It's the reality of this realm. Is everything unfair? Is that you've been you've been hurt, and misused, and and all this and that? Well, of course. <laughs> Welcome to the reality of this realm, which the God of this world, the Prince of Darkness, the Prince of this air, Satan, hopes that you will continue to ignore the Word of God, ignore the Apostles' Doctrine, ignore your responsibility to a loving, sacrificing God who died for your sins. Come on. Come on, get with it. Get with the apostles. Stand with us on the rock. Praise God. And you, hey, whatever you have faith and belief in, good for you, but it's what you obey that matters. Come on. All right. Now, the confirmation that the apostle Saul, who became Paul, was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ is found in Romans chapter 6, verse 3. He says, Know ye not that as many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized, <laughs> were buried with him? Okay, that's a fact. That's reality. All right? That's in Romans chapter 6, verse 3. 1 Corinthians 14, 8, uh, 18. Paul said he spoke in tongues more than anyone. Come on. Are you practicing your tongues? Are you worshiping in tongues? Are you praying in your heavenly language? You should be. Come on. He that speaks in an unknown tongue talks to God. That's what Paul told the Corinthians. Come on. By the time Matthew wrote his gospel, all the nations were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Peter said in Acts chapter 2, Men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, Hearken to my words. He wasn't demoting Jesus. He was the microphone from heaven. <laughs> yes, and he commanded them in Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem to hearken to Peter's words. And Satan wants to plug your ears to the Bible podcast. He wants you to plug your ears to the Apostles' Doctrine. He wants you going down in a false counterfeit baptisms so your sins never remitted and you split hell wide open carrying your Bible as you go to hell because your sin was never remitted. That is the rule. That is what is required. So help you God. Now, I met a circuit judge from Georgia while I was in my routine chores, and he told me when you stepped into my courtroom, I didn't pay attention to your alligator tears. I didn't, it didn't move him to see you say, well, I'm going to get it right, uh, uh, judge. I'm going to, uh, no, the, the circuit court judge said, listen. You put yourself in this condition, and I'm just announcing to you the judgment that's now going to come upon your soul. That is a fact. That is reality. So while you're out here pretending that you've obeyed the scriptures, you're breaking the rule. You're breaking what's required to enter in at the door. And you know what? When you do stand before Jesus Christ, you will bow your knee to the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. Every knee will bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Woo! So we don't want you waiting till that day of judgment uh, to, be, to, to, to be accounted for your sins. We want you on this side of heaven to go down in a watery grave in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Praise God. Bring on peace into your life. Bring on oneness in the mind of Christ and obedience to what is the rule and what is required when you're buried in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. You want more peace? You tired of torment? You don't know which way to turn? Right now your life's a mess and you're out of your frame. You don't know if you're a woman. You don't know if you're a man. You don't know what you are. You're ready to unlock your brain and splatter it all over the wall. Stop. Come back to your Bible. Come back. And let's get you in a grave, buried in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And let's pray for you to get filled with the Holy Ghost, the life and inspiration of God Almighty dwelling inside of you. 
And if you reject this, then you're asking the hordes of hell to run you ragged, to run you into a devil's hell. It'll be too late then. Remember, Peter told Judea and all of Jerusalem, they that dwelled there, hearken to my words. Now that's walking in the authority that he was given by Jesus, Matthew chapter 16. Come on. Now this is a fact. All the disciples stood with Peter, as it's declared, when he instructed the Jewish nations, and they all helped him baptized and communicate to all the nations, okay, uh, to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. 3,120 souls baptized in Jesus' name. Fact, Matthew, Paul, both Matthew and Paul baptized in Jesus Christ, and they never disagreed with Peter. That's right. Remember, Paul said in Galatians 1.8, if I or an angel preach any other gospel, let him be a curse. That included Peter, but they spoke the same thing. That's the truth. That's reality. Okay. And uh, Matthew was not in a disagreement with Peter when he buried him in Jesus' name in Acts chapter 2. Peter buried Matthew in Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Okay. Fact, Philip and Ananias and Paul, okay, all spoke the same thing. There was no division. They were perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. And that is declared to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Paul made sure that everybody spoke the same thing, had the same mind and the same judgment. Come on. The Jews knew they were judged when Peter told them that they were the ones that crucified Jesus. They were judged. And they said, well, what must we do? And Peter said, repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This promise is unto you and your children to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That announcement does not make room for reformations. What Jesus established does not need a reformation. Jesus wasn't waiting on the government church in Rome to fire up their own persuasion. Jesus wasn't waiting for the Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Jehovah Witness, Mormons, all of the 4,200 per persuasions that are going to take you to a devil's hell. Jesus never relied on human beings uh, only to deliver the oracles of the kingdom of heaven and what is the rule and what is required. And that's what Peter delivered. There doesn't need to be a reformation. There was no reformation for the uh, the ark that Noah built. Noah didn't get to freelance and build a sunroom and a, a game room. He had to build that ark exactly the way God had instructed him. Okay, he obeyed the oracles and what is the rule and what is required to build that ark. There were no... Uh, 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 subcontractors helping Moses uh, modify the traveling church tabernacle in the desert. Moses built that tabernacle exactly the way God had showed him. And he gave Moses the Ten Commandments, not suggestions. Okay, but in this realm, we have the government uh, helping a small minority groups or an individual get rid of God out of schools, get rid of the Bible, get rid of, get rid of, and, and these, these judges across this land are, are, are helping the small perverted uh, perversion and nonsense of narcissism and, and, and doctrines of devils and seducing spirits to flourish. Yeah, it's the truth overwhelming evidence that Satan has his way and is getting his will done to make sure you burn and split hell wide open. But we're on the Bible podcast telling you that when you crack your Bible, they all spoke the same thing. They all obeyed the rule of what is required. And not only did Noah will stand up in judgment against you, Moses will stand up in judgment against you. They built it exactly what was requ required and what was the rule from heaven. And then when David received the uh, instruments and instructions to, to fashion the temple, he gave it to his son Solomon, and they built it exactly the way God designed it. And you're going to say it doesn't matter how you're baptized or filled with the Holy Ghost? You're lying to yourself. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that lying spirit off of you. It's going to matter. 
when hell opens its mouth and you're going in it with your loved ones because you took for light. You took the deception of doctrines of devils and seducing spirits and you said the letters in red were more important than anything that Peter said, Paul said. You're lying to yourself. When Peter and Paul endorsed the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, when they baptized nations, John's 12 believers, and everyone in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That is a fact. That is reality. And you cannot have salvation in any other name because there's no other name given among men under heaven whereby you must be saved, Acts 4 and 12. That's a fact. That's reality. Come on. We're bringing it. We're bringing it. We, 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 want, we want you to come on board. Get up on the rock. Obey the apostles' doctrine. All right. See, Paul would write to the Corinthians that they had the same mind and judgment. He wasn't playing around. This wasn't a suggestion. Fact, Jesus from heaven was also in agreement with the apostles' doctrine. Why? Because he established it when he gave it to Peter. When Jesus opened the clouds and looked at Saul, and Saul said, what do you want me to do? Jesus could have said, well, Paul, Peter got it all wrong. Yeah, I need you to go straighten that out. No, he said, get up and go into Damascus. We told you what you must do. And you can read that story in Acts chapter 9. Okay, Paul had to obey the oracles. And what is the rule and requirement to enter in? To get his soul right. Come on, you're not do God's no respecter of persons. You're not going to dodge the apostles' doctrine. You're going to get you're going to get a big smile and say praise God for the 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 Bible podcast and the apostles' doctrine. I'm going to church and I'm going to demand my pastor to bury me in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. And he's going to lay his hands on me to get the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to know because I'm going to speak in tongues when the Spirit gives me utterance. Yes, yes, God's no respecter of persons. Jesus is going to come back for the same church that he started. That's right. Okay, don't get lost in deception. Okay, no one in the New Testament uh, is baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's a fact. That's a reality. Until 325 A.D., uh, when the Roman government uh, altered baptism. Yes. Okay. All right. And you wouldn't send your child to a school where they taught them one plus one is five. You wouldn't send your child to school where they tell your son to go ahead and be a girl. And they tell your daughter to go ahead and be a boy. Or here's a, a box of kitty litter. And if you want to be a cat today, you go over and wallow in the kitty litter. Or here's a biscuit treat. And if you claim to be a dog, just go gnaw on that biscuit. Isn't that, saying, isn't that crazy? It's crazy. But guess what? They're doing it. They're mocking God because nobody knows the truth anymore. They devalue the truth. And guess what? When you devalue the apostles' doctrine, you've devalued the oracles, the rule, the requirement. The one plus one is two. And that God created you a boy. God created you a girl. And God gave you dominion over the kitty cat and the doggy. But no, no, you've shunned and ignored and pushed God's word aside. Now, I don't need this. And then you're wondering why you want to stick a gun in your mouth and blow your brains out. Because that's actual evidence Satan wants to drag you to hell. He wants you to think you're in control of your life and you have the right to pull the switch. Huh? That's right. That's what Satan said. That's what Satan said in the garden. Come on, you're playing with life and death now. Come on. Come on, let's wake out of this zombie state of going straight to hell. The God of this world, the Prince of Darkness, who can transform into an angel of light. You can't discern him. That's right. Why? Because you're going around in your life with your own ideas, with your own agenda, with your own deception. That's right. That's exactly right. You know I'm telling you the truth. And you can read that in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15. That's a fact. That's reality. Now listen, in that scripture, 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15, it also talks about Satan has ministers that are transformed who are nothing full of deceit. And this is how you're going to know 
that you're following a demon straight from hell because it says whose end shall be according to their works. Well, what do ministers do? They take deceitful ministers, take you and baptize you and Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and then explain away with their explain away tactics. You don't need to speak in tongues. See, they're working to put you in hell where the apostles taught and pro, pro, proclaimed how to do the works that get you in heaven. Acts chapter 2, 8, 9, 10, and 19, and 22. See, their works. Yes, baptism is a work. Remember, James said, faith without works is dead. You can't, you can't avoid baptism. It, Jesus said, repent or perish in the Gospels. Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not is going to be damned. And then he said in John chapter uh, uh, 3, verse 5, you must be born again of water and spirit, or you won't see or enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said to the woman at the well, okay, the Father looks for them to worship him in spirit and in truth. Not truths. It's singular. There's only one faith, one baptism, and one God, according to Paul when he wrote the Ephesians in the fourth chapter. Come on. And what about Jude when he said the common salvation, which was delivered to the saints? Come on. And he wrote that gospel. He wrote his book in 70 AD. Come on. And Paul wrote in Romans chapter 6, in verse 17 and 18, he said to the Romans, You were, I praise God, you were once sinners. <laughs> But you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Who was he talking about? He was thanking Peter for getting up and delivering the oracles and what is the rule and what is required to enter in at the door of the kingdom of heaven kingdom of heaven. So faith without works is dead, and these ministers, these false ministers represent heaven's hell's agenda. These false ministers represent hell's agenda to misguide you into a devil's hell whose end shall be according to their works. Read it, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15, okay, which are telling you baptism doesn't matter. Father and Son and Holy Ghost, you can be baptized in titles. That, okay, wrong. That is wrong. You don't need the Holy Ghost. That was done away with. Uh, the, I've had people take me to Corinthians and say, see here, tongues shall cease. Well, but, well, they don't go on and say, the Bible says knowledge will cease also. Oh, well, we, we don't want to include knowledge. It's just the Holy Ghost. So, so beware Knowledge hasn't ceased. There are things in this world they still can't have and have no knowledge about. That's right. So tongues hasn't ceased either. All right. All right. Tongues is uh, the evidence of speaking in tongues are, is done away with. Don't listen to these babblers, these agents of Satan, okay? Now we want to warn you against the narcissistic pastor who's only, only showing up at that church to fill his own grandiosis, his greed, come on, and his snake eyes agenda. Yeah, that's right. Remember, the snake eyes, they'll be looking at you and all of a sudden they get that squint. Come on. The snake eyes. All right. Beware of the narcissistic pastor who wants to control, manipulate you through your feelings and emotions. And he would love for you to desire his approval. Come on. That's why they make statements like, maybe it'll stick this time. Or maybe this or maybe that. Or, or you need to do this or you need to do that. Because they want you to want their approval. Okay, and beware, beware of the human curse of only wanting the validation of one another and not the validation from heaven. All right, beware of that narcissistic pastor who's uh, only concerned about his grandiose greed and the snake eyes. Okay, the snake eye treatment is you want his approval. 
He wants you to want his approval. Be beware of the sarcastic ministers that are out there, okay? They like the that -a boy club. Yes. Come on. And they love to explain away that with the tactical Bible that they explain away baptism in Jesus Christ. They explain away being filled with the Holy Ghost. They explain away uh, you, you can't live above sin. You'll always be a sinner. You always self-sabotage yourself. Okay, those are, that's, that's the doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. Beware of the narcissistic pastor and the, the, the uh, sarcastic minister. And beware of the pinball wizard evangelist who loves to slap around scripture, okay, like it's a shake and bake box. And he has you crying alligator tears, okay, and gets you all emotional. And guess what? He never tells you how to get your sins remitted. He doesn't tell you to get filled with the Holy Ghost. No, because his grandiosis wants... Wants you giving him that leaning forward money. He wants that payday. He wants his name in lights. Yes. That's a fact. That's a reality. Beware of the tumbleweed saint who doesn't know what to believe. They're tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Okay. Now these wolves in sheep's clothing. Okay. Hirelings, dogs, pigs, beasts empty souls who only care about human validation all right beware beware you're not getting the validation of heaven you're wanting human validation okay that's a strong delusion because you didn't have a love for the truth god sends you a strong delusion that you'll believe a lie and be damned that's in the book of thessalonians paul wrote that to the thessalonians Okay, you want the human validation rather than the validation of, of God by obeying the apostles' doctrine, Acts chapter 2, 8, 9, 10, and 19, and 22. Beware of the counterfeit churches, uh, the imposters, manipulators. Don't forget about the smorgasbord churches. Any faith goes here. Doctrines, any doctrines can go on here. Okay. We're a tossed salad in a community. We're serving all the face. That, that is the worst thing, okay? That was never endorsed in your Bible, okay? Peter, Philip, Ananias, Paul, Jesus all preached what is the rule and what is required to enter in at heaven's door. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and the notification bell to get all and more of the Bible Podcast content. Place the Word of God on the throne of your heart, its rightful place, and declare Jesus Christ your first love. And obey the rule, what is required, the Apostles' Doctrine.